What most people don't understand is that we need to consume animal foods in order to get all of the vitamins, minerals, elements, and fatty acids that our bodies need to thrive. This is because animal foods have all of these nutrients in their most bioavailable form. The plant forms of nutrients are not available in many cases to the human body as the animal versions are, making the foods that we discuss today the healthiest foods in general. All of these foods were prized by our hunter-gatherer ancestors and generally used as part of special feeding regimens for children as well as pregnant women, even the elderly. We have to keep in mind that the nutrient content of an animal food depends directly on how it was raised. Farmed fish will lack the nutrients that wild fish contains. Same with grain-fed versus grass-fed beef. The requirement for a food being healthy is 1. Be an animal food and 2. Be of high quality. I know this goes against what we've been told our whole lives and a lot of these preconceived notions can become hard to overcome, especially when we start discussing the need to eat nose to tail, all parts of the animal. Of course, eating an egg is much more approachable than chomping down on some fish guts. Another thing is that different nutrients are stored in different tissues on the animal. Protein tends to store water-soluble vitamins, whereas fat and cholesterol store fat-soluble vitamins, but most animal foods have some fat in them, and this explains why certain parts of the animal can be used in almost a supplement-like manner in a low dose, whereas other parts of the animal need to be consumed in fairly high caloric amounts in order to obtain optimal nutrition. The nutrient information I will be discussing today is from a German database. I will not try to pronounce it, <coughs> Nauer Trechner. <coughs> this is important because most data available in the United States is not accurate. Most people don't know these foods contain these vitamins. Number 10, dairy. Dairy, more specifically, raw and grass-fed dairy. If the dairy is not raw, some of the nutrients are lost during heating, aka pasteurization. And if the dairy is not grass-fed, there won't be a significant nutrient content in the dairy product. Most, if not all, dairy in the supermarket is pasteurized, homogenized, and fortified with plant-based vitamins, making it a poor source of nutrition. Raw cheese is commonly found in supermarkets and there is a website realmilk.com that can help you source raw dairy. Dairy in itself has most of the vitamins, minerals, elements, and fatty acids our bodies need except the fatty acids are not in their preformed versions EPA and DHA. Dairy contains alpha linolenic acid uh, which needs to be converted in the body. What's interesting is that human breast milk contains EPA and DHA in these preformed versions. So dairy is good, but just not perfect. Higher fat content dairy, such as butter or cream, will have more fat-soluble vitamins, whereas protein-based dairy, such as milk, will have more water-soluble vitamins. The reason dairy is low on this list is because of the difficulty some people have of obtaining raw grass-fed, high-quality dairy, but the main reason it's so low is for allergy reasons. Allergens are something you should not be consuming, even if you only have mild reactions to it. You know, chronic inflammation from dairy is a big issue for some people. Number nine, eggs. Eggs should actually be higher up on this list as they have every nutrient our body needs. Even large amounts of preformed omega-3 EPA and DHA, eggs are also known for having high cholesterol. And cholesterol is a precursor to all cell membranes and hormones in the body. The problem is that 99.9% .9 of eggs are corn and soy fed, which alters the omega fatty acid profile, giving it a high omega-6 content. And this also reduces the nutrient content because corn and soy don't have a lot of vitamins, minerals, and elements that can be transferred into the flesh or eggs of the chicken. Unlike the other foods we will mention today, it's almost impossible to get quality eggs unless you're raising the chickens yourself. And 
on a list of the 10 healthiest foods on the planet, uh, we have to consider this factor. Eggs would have probably been number two or three, maybe even number one. Uh, you can argue that if we didn't have the modern problem of feeding these chickens such crap quality food. For most people, eggs are a great source of nutrition, even with these downfalls. But for the few with allergies and intolerances, eggs can cause issues just like dairy. Number eight, animal fat. This also includes really fatty cuts of meat such as beef belly. Fat-soluble vitamins are called fat-soluble vitamins for a reason, and this is where we have to make a decision if the healthiest food is based on caloric content or actual nutrient amount, you know, macronutrient versus micronutrient, because calories are incredibly important for survival. The fat of the animal was prized by our ancestors for this reason. In our modern world, and state of excess calories, we have put ourselves in a unique scenario. It's not normal or natural to have access to these macronutrient calories without the presence of micronutrient calories because the only real source of caloric energy in nature for most groups of people was animal fat. Modern plant foods and high carbohydrate consumption allows this. Selecting the fatty parts of the animal was observed in all hunter-gatherer groups. The fat stored around the kidneys, bone marrow, brains, brisket, belly, short ribs. It's something that we prefer naturally for a reason. When we analyze the nutrition value of this fat, it contains all of the fat-soluble vitamins we need in balanced amounts. Granted, it is of high quality, as we discussed earlier. Number seven, bone marrow. Bone marrow has a similar nutrient profile to fat as it is mostly fat, but it is predisposed to storing a higher percentage of nutrients. Even if an animal is in a very malnourished state, you know, literally having no fat stores left, the body will still have some fat in the bone marrow. This means that as a hunter or a predator, even in times of starvation, you could have killed an animal and obtained fat calories from the marrow. Our ability to use tools to access this marrow is believed to have played a key role in procuring the calories needed for our large brain size uh, through evolution. Number six, fatty fish. As we know, the fat content dictates the vitamin content to some degree, the same thing applies to fish. What's unique about fish is how they store fat. The leaner fish will actually store fat in their liver. Cod, for example. Whereas fatty fish like mackerel and sardines will have a lean liver but store fat in their flesh. In this number six discussion, we are specifically talking about the flesh of the fish because most people don't, you know, gut the fish and suck up the organs although that's what our indigenous ancestors did. This food has a balanced amount of all of the nutrients our bodies need, and nothing really stands out here except for vitamin D. For an animal to have a high vitamin D content, it needs to be consuming it in its diet, and as wild fish are on their natural diet, uh, this explains why all of these Scandinavian and Nordic countries used fish as a source of nutrition for thousands and thousands of years. You know, there's a lack of sunlight and they used fish to supplement their vitamin D3 intake to some degree. And if you were to eat a pound and a half to two pounds of fatty fish per day, you would get several thousand IU of vitamin D3. Not enough to replace the sun, but it certainly makes a difference. Number five, kidneys. Kidneys are an organ that is commonly overlooked, and for fairly good reason, as they tend to smell like urine and be difficult to prepare in an approachable manner from a culinary standpoint. Kidneys, just like liver, actually have every nutrient our body needs. The main difference is that kidneys don't boast the super high vitamin A content that liver has, trading it for a slightly higher selenium content. Organs kidney in this case, also tend to have a higher cholesterol content. This takes the stress of producing cholesterol off of our livers, and cholesterol is also very important for hormonal production and cell membrane fluidity, as we mentioned briefly earlier with eggs.
Number four, brains. Animal brains are an excellent source of both macronutrient and micronutrient nutrition, arguably the most important food to ever exist in the human diet. And they are a source of nutrients that people typically have a difficult time getting, vitamin C, vitamin E, and omega fatty acids, particularly DHA in the more available phospholipid form. DHA occurs in several different forms, and when it's in this form, it can pass into the brain easier and be used more efficiently by the body. Uh, this was originally spoken about a lot by Dr. Rhonda Patrick. I'm not sure where she got it from. Since the brains of an animal are mostly fat, they are also an excellent source of cholesterol. Number three, fish eggs. Fish eggs, aka caviar, just like a lot of other foods on this list, have all of the nutrients our bodies need in balanced amounts. All of the vitamins, minerals, elements, the cholesterol is incredibly high, and fish eggs are most notably consumed for their omega fatty acid content. Just like brains, uh, fish eggs contain DHA in the phospholipid form, and just like fatty fish, they are one of the only good sources of vitamin D3 available to us. Yes, ruminant animals can have vitamin D3 in their flesh, ruminant animals being like cows, goat, and sheep, but the animals have to be out in the sun, and it's usually concentrated in the blood, not in the flesh of the animal. So, unless you're getting super duper high quality, you know, beef or pork or chicken, your best bet for vitamin D3 intake is going to be fatty fish or fish eggs. And normal chicken eggs as well, but we know most chickens are kept in a barn and not getting enough sunlight. Number two, oysters. And this is really just shellfish in general, especially fattier shellfish like the oysters, like crab, lobster. All of these foods are nutritionally complete and they have everything our body needs to thrive. There were even hunter-gatherer societies who subsisted solely off of shellfish. You know, they found anthropological evidence of like shells stacked super duper high. And they were foraged fairly easily, you know, much easier than hunting an animal. It's arguable that fish eggs are a higher source of nutrients than shellfish, but shellfish is more balanced and I would say readily available, it can be consumed for a larger portion of the diet. The higher the fat content of the shellfish, uh, the more vitamins it will generally have. People don't really discuss shellfish enough, and I think it's because, you know, if you're not by the coast, you can't really get it, uh, especially at a good price. But a dozen oysters a week in a restaurant going out for dinner is probably the healthiest thing you can do. Number one, liver. And this also includes fish liver. Liver is the most nutrient dense food there is. Not only does it have every single nutrient our body needs, it is the only possible way to get a large amount of vitamin A in the animal form of retinol. Unfortunately, none of the other foods we mentioned on this list have a high vitamin A intake. And you know, with our modern diets being so deprived of vitamin A, Liver tends to be necessary to consume uh, to get our health back initially when incorporating more animal foods into our diet. Liver is also exceptionally high in vitamin B12, over 20 times higher than a steak. Oysters are also incredibly high in B12. That's why I put them at number two. As we said, liver contains everything. Vitamin A, B, C, D, E, K, all the minerals, all the elements, iodine, you name it high cholesterol, even preformed omega fatty acids, EPA and DHA. Fish liver in particular is higher in these omega fatty acids and some fish have different amounts of fat in their liver so that can vary pretty drastically. That is the list boys and girls. We didn't really mention fermented foods outside of briefly touching on cheese but when a food is fermented, it raises the vitamin K2 content. And every single indigenous group consumed fermented animal products in some form on a fairly regular basis. I will link a video discussing uh, these fermented meats afterwards that you can check out if you would like to learn more about that. I will also link a video at the end here where I tasted every single organ on a lamb and I had a pretty similar discussion to this. So thank you guys for joining me today. Please like the video, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. Share the video if you can. 
Recently, we've launched Frankie's Free Range Meat, providing you guys with high quality nutrient dense animal foods at an affordable price. We have just about every food that was mentioned on this list, and if we don't have it now, we will have it in the future. So if you boys and girls want Frankie's meat in your mouth, you know where to go, Frankie's freerangemeat.com. Thanks again, guys, for joining me today, and enjoy the rest of your day. Is this like my new uniform now? Because, all right, so white balance is hard to do, so I usually like wearing a white shirt, and then I kind of feel like uh, I need to show off a little bit, you know, the bronze skin, and then the chain is just a joke, because I'm already an Italian guy wearing a wife beater. Why not take it to another step? I don't... I don't know if it necessarily makes me look unprofessional, but uh, I can't wear a dress shirt with this hair. You know, I can't. It looks, I look like a mess.